Okay, to the previous speaker, thanks a lot for that talk. That was interesting. It looks like we don't have questions in the room. I don't think it was for lack of interest. It was just a very good explanation. Thank you. So um, I'm a little early with these closing remarks, but I'm just going to go for it anyway. So in terms of upcoming events, uh, the Linux Foundation has Open Source Summit North America coming up in late June in Austin, Texas. And there will be a Kubernetes on Edge Day North America coming soon. Uh, but the Linux Foundation hasn't surfaced the CFP site or registration yet. I believe that that's destined to go to Detroit either before or during KubeCon, which I think is in October. Um, there are a few other uh, uh, embedded system conferences held by the Linux Foundation. The one I'm aware of for sure is embedded uh, the, the Open Source Summit with Automotive Linux, which is in December in Tokyo. And I think they have one of those before that in South America and perhaps one in Europe that, if I'm not mistaken, was in Ireland. But the Linux Foundation site should have references to those things. If you're interested in this IoT Edge and Kubernetes uh, topic, there has been a Kubernetes IoT Edge working group operating for years over under the Kubernetes project. So it has a Slack channel. It has. Zoom meetings that have been every two weeks, although half the meetings are for Asia, so they're in uncomfortable time zones potentially, unless you're in Asia, and half for North America. Um, this group is in transition. So what happened was that a lot of the discussions coming up in this working group went beyond Kubernetes. I mean, there were even you know, the heresy talks of is Kubernetes really suited for Edge? And the Kubernetes project decided that maybe this is a better fit for being under the CNCF because we've got a lot of CNCF projects like CubeEdge came and talked to us. Some of the WebAssembly stuff is over under the um, CNCF GitHub. And it's been decided that this group is destined to move so that rather than being hosted under Kubernetes, it will still exist, but be underneath the CNCF. And that move is going to mean that perhaps the Slack channel will change uh, the place. We have a GitHub repository where we've published some white papers and collateral information, but I think Somewhere between one month from now and October when KubeCon North America hits, this group is going to move. We'll leave the legacy things where they are now, the Slack channel and everything, but we'll probably leave a parting remark in the Slack channel saying, go over here into this other channel on CNCF Slack. And it's possible that we'll move the meeting times, but that hasn't been determined yet. But Anyway, there is this group. Um, we're very much open for users to come, listen and learn with, often the meetings have pretty open topics. You know, we've had recently demos of tools like Portainer, um, the Red Hat version of, uh, Red Hat has that micro shift and we had a presentation on that. And we're open if anybody in the audience works on these projects. Our rule is that we don't want, we don't want presentations that are just commercial sales pitch. You know, if you've got some product that's closed source um, and you're trying to sell it, don't come to this meeting to expect us to you know, be a platform where you'll put on your sales pitch. But it, certainly if it's open source, and it's okay if it's open source under a CNCF approved license and you sell a commercial version with support besides, that's fine. You know, something like Portainer, for example, has given presentations at the group. Um, 
so if you're either associated with an open source project or even a vendor that has a free community edition that's open source, uh, you're welcome to a, uh, just put yourself on the agenda for a presentation at the list. It's not very formal. You can, um, we share a document with the agenda and you just become a member, you get edit rights and put yourself on the agenda. Um, so that's how that works and you might be interested in joining the group. Uh, so to wrap this up, I just wanna make a comment that in tech, things are rarely these overnight successes that go from inception to universal adoption, like instantly, like the drop of water captured in a high-speed camera or even within 24 hours. The process involved here is kind of more along the lines of pursuing a college degree. When you get down to it, these open source projects get built, but it might take up to four years before they build up enough momentum, stability, things like this to um, get adoption. And along the way during that four year process, the ones that turn out healthy and get adoption are ones that get exposed in venues like this where users hear about them, but freely exchange information, give feedback as to, gee, I have this use case, it's not quite right, but what could I do to accomplish this? And maybe the people behind the project learn to adapt it. Like the speaker before me talking about WebAssembly is an example of that, where that's really a rapidly moving thing that people, it was originally done for web browser, but the act of moving that kind of stuff over to be suitable for being something Docker-like uh, for Edge, but Docker-like in the, in the context that it's packaged up, uh, not Docker-like in the sense that, gee, the WebAssembly might be smaller, have much reduced startup latency, maybe be more portable. But these kinds of new things are the kind of subject matter both for that group I talked about, conferences like this, and what I'd like to encourage is that we're about to break for a happy hour. And I know it's been a long day, it's tempting to go back to your hotel room, but I've seen some pretty interesting conversations break out in the so-called hallway track, so I'd encourage people to just hang around and have these conversations about the cool new technology you saw today or even cool new technology that you're aware of that you didn't see today. And let's get these conversations going and learn from each other. So please stick around for that happy hour. It's, I've been told that you go out the door, turn right, and it's going to be near the front door somewhere. You got one of these green cards that gets you a cocktail and uh, you might as well at least hang around long enough to burn your green card before you head back to the hotel. Um, so that's due to start in 12 minutes. We still have a little more. I want to just rapidly go through the list of people to thank. These are the CNCF organizers of this event. A few of them were outside in the hallway and they were the ones who managed this thing. Um, so thank them if you see them. Um, also, I want to thank all the speakers uh, I'm not going to read all the names because, to be honest, I'd probably butcher two or three of the names, but if you were here, you saw them and they said their own names, and we'll just go through them. But there's a lot of work in giving these talks. Um, you know, people rehearse them. They don't get paid for this. And uh, I want to shout out some appreciation for the act of doing this. You know, it's a lot like the act these days of writing a book in the computer industry. You might think, you know, that that's glamorous and lucrative, but nobody makes any money at that. And I don't think anybody makes money at speaking at these conferences. They just do it to share their ideas. And uh, I want to thank these, these speakers. And then finally, this event had a program committee, and these are the people who review the CFPs. Um, 
I'm on this list, but there's a number of other people. This is also a fair amount of work. You know, we get over 100 submissions and go through these and pick the best candidates, try to avoid duplications. One of the odd things about this, and I, I already talked to somebody in the audience on a break about this who was interested in speaking. So definitely at that happy hour, if you're interested in speaking, come and chat with me, because I can give you some advice having reviewed these, both for this Edge Day, but I also am a reviewer for the KubeCon conference itself and have been reviewing for KubeCon for three years. Um, often what happens is people put in a really good proposal, but it turns out six people put in a proposal on exactly that same topic. So there are certain things that are competitive. It's hard to really predict how that is gonna turn out. If you did put them in in the past, if you're in that scenario where you were one of six and very close, um, you shouldn't get discouraged. Don't, don't, you might be able to just submit it to the next one that comes along and do just fine. The other thing is with the CNCF and Linux Foundation, I don't know that people are aware of it because they rarely do this, but if you get rejected, you can just email the people and ask them why. And the people on these review committees normally give reviews in writing. And I know f for myself, I, don't, I never write up a review that I'm not willing to share with the author, but you won't automatically get that. But if you ask for it, you will. And you know, you might learn if you were in one of these scenarios where it was just a lot of competition and you could maybe leave it almost unchanged and just try again and just get it in at a different location. Or in other cases, if this is the first time you're doing it, maybe you're just not aware of the sorts of things that uh, would get your speaking proposal accepted. You know, a, a lot of this is just Clear, expect, clear explanations of where you intend to go with this. Um, but once again, I'm, I'd be happy to chat about this and give people tips for getting those accepted or even, you know, a lot of times there's different tracks at these things too. And you're gonna be far more likely to get accepted in one track versus another. There's sometimes crossovers where at Edge you could have it submit it under edge or maybe it has networking aspects and you'd be better off to submit it to a networking track. You're almost never better off to submit it to multiple because they will, in fact, I think KubeCon pro recently prohibited multiple submits from one speaker so you couldn't do it if you wanted to. But in the old days, it watered down your vote and made it actually tougher to get an accept if you put in multiple, you're, you're just better to put all your efforts into one talk, make it as good as you can, and put it in there. Um, so moving on, the final thank yous are to our sponsors who help pay for the event, the food. And that's it, thank you for coming. But like I said, please take advantage of the opportunity to continue the conversation at the reception, which supposed to start in seven minutes, so maybe by the time you gather your stuff, walk down to the entrance, they should be pouring drinks. So hope to see you there, thank you.